Investors in PPG industries have enjoyed much success over the years, as the company's stock price has performed quite well. Also a different aristocrat to boot. But the question is, is this still a good buy today? Stick around to find out. Hey everyone, Stock Ninja here. This is episode 21 of Who Beat the S&P 500. Today we will look into PPG Industries, which is actually a subscriber request. I have also had a couple other requests on international companies, so I'll see if I can start a new segment on that in the future. But first, without further ado, let's dive into PPG Industries. PPG was founded 137 years ago in the year 1883 by Captain John Baptiste Ford and John Pitt Crane Jr. The company was based in Creighton, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. PPG soon became the United States' first commercially successful producer of high-quality, thick, flat glass using the plate process. Today, PPG Industries is a multi-billion dollar company with over 150 manufacturing locations worldwide, producing coating, glass, fiberglass, and chemicals. Let's see what kind of returns PPG would have given you over the last 20 years. Had you invested $10,000 into PPG Industries exactly 20 years ago, you would have a six-figure total worth $105,178.25 versus a $34,925 of the S&P. That's a 951.93% total return Turn, beating the S&P's 249.35% by about 4 times, which comes out to an average annual return of 12.48% versus a 6.45% of the S&P in the same time frame. Very solid historical returns from PPG, and as we can see from the chart, the company is much more volatile than the S&P 500. If you are enjoying the content, don't forget to destroy that like button and subscribe to the channel. PPG Industries currently has a market cap of about $32 billion, making it a large cap company. PPG is listed within the basic material sector with an industry focused in specialty chemicals. PPG fittingly trades with the ticker symbol PPG and is currently a member of the S&P 500 index. With a quarterly dividend distribution, PPG typically pays their dividend during the months of March, June, September, and December. They currently have a dividend yield of 1.60%, which is about on par with other well-known dividend-paying material stocks. The annual payout comes out to $2.16 per year at a healthy payout ratio of 39.04%, a very manageable and sustainable level. PPG has been paying uninterrupted dividends since 1899 and has raised their dividend for 48 consecutive years, making them a dividend aristocrat and just two years shy of a dividend king. Their CAGR or compound annual growth rate has been solid as well, with the 10-year CAGR coming out to 6.4%. The 5-year CAGR is slightly higher at around 8.61%, but somewhere between those two numbers should be a safe estimate for the future. All things considered, this is a very safe dividend paying company with a dividend safety score of 93 out of 99, making the dividend very safe. PPG will be an excellent addition to any dividend portfolio given their dividend history, growth, and overall dividend safety for any dividend investor looking for stable income. PPG Industries fiscal year runs from January through December each year. As fiscal year 2020 is not yet complete, we will look at their 2019 annual report and the last earnings report to get an idea of the company's financials. In fiscal year 2019, PPG Industries generated approximately $15.15 billion in revenue and is actually averaging a negative 0.2% revenue decrease over the last five years, which is definitely not something investors like to see. Net income has also been relatively flat or somewhat decreasing as well. Anemic growth is a major cause for concern. Historically, PPG has traded anywhere between a PE of 10 and 20, but has climbed to the low 20s the last few years. The 2020 virus has had an impact on the company this year, but that being said, PPG is currently trading at a PE ratio of 32.26 with a forward PE of 21.27, which would indicate a return to normalcy for the stock in terms of a PE ratio perspective next year. Diving a bit deeper, let's take a look at the balance sheet. Right off the bat, we can see that total assets are going up, which is good, but so are total liabilities. Both assets and liabilities are keeping pace somewhat, so not too bad here. When we look at PPG's assets versus liabilities, PPG seems to have a decent cushion between their liquid assets and short-term obligations, which is always nice to see. Now obviously, we just discussed that the company isn't really growing organically, so like all companies struggling with organic growth, they have been buying back their shares. Shares outstanding have been on a steady decline since about 2010. Nothing wrong with that as PPG is maintaining their dividend as well as a cash cushion in case things go wrong. The last thing I want to look at is free cash flow. This to me looks quite good actually. 
free cash flow has been steadily going up every year since 2016, with trailing 12 month free cash flow of $1.5 billion headed in the right direction for sure. PPG Industries has two main reportable segments, the performance coding segment and the industrial coding segment. The performance coding segment primarily supplies a variety of protective and decorative coatings, sealants, and finishes along with paint strippers, stains, and related chemicals, as well as transparencies and transparent armor. This segment can be further broken down into what PPG calls strategic business units of automated refinish coatings, aerospace coatings, protective and marine coatings, architectural coatings, Americas and Asia Pacific, and architectural coatings, Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Overall, we can see that there was a slight 0.6% decline in net sales versus the 2018 numbers in this segment. The industrial coating segment supplies a variety of protective and decorative coatings and finishes along with adhesives, sealants, metal pre-treatment products, optical monomers, and coatings, precipitate silicas, and other specialty materials. The strategic business units for this segment are automated OEM coatings, industrial coatings, packaging coatings, and specialty coatings and materials. Overall, the industrial coating segment declined 2.8% in fiscal year 2019 versus 2018. Both segments were impacted by unfavorable foreign currency translation. In 2019, what exactly does this mean? The functional currency of most significant non-US operations is a local currency. Assets and liabilities of these operations are translated into US dollars using year-end exchange rates. Income and expenses are translated using the average exchange rates for the reporting period. On that note, we can look at the Q2 earnings report that was released in June of 2020, where we can see that the foreign currency translation continued to hamper PBG. As PBG has been impacted quite significantly by the virus, their net sales was down 22% over the year. One of the positive things that I saw in their 2019 annual report is that PPG's R&D cost equates to about 3% of their annual revenue each year. The company recognizes the importance of constantly adapting to the future and improvement of their existing products. Now, let's see how the company fared in the dot-com bubble crash, the great financial recession, and how it's currently trading during the downturn in 2020. During the dot-com bubble crash, PPG fell 53.02%, falling about 2.5% more than the S&P's 50.41% decline. During the great financial crisis, PPG fell by around 65.8%, dropping about 8% more than the 57.61% decline by the S&P. That drop was relatively short-lived though. As you can see by the graph, PPG was off to the races not long after hitting that low in early 2009. During the downturn in 2020, PPG fell about 47.9%, compared to the S&P's roughly 35.59% decline. PPG underperforming the S&P during each recession during the drawdown phase but has still managed to somehow outperform the S&P in the long run. The stock is obviously very volatile, but so far in 2020, it is trailing the S&P with a year-to-date return of around 3.41%, whereas the S&P is closer to the 11% return mark. Headquartered in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania with around 47,600 full-time employees, PPG Industries is currently led by Chairman and CEO Michael H. McGarry. McGarry has been with PPG since 1981 and no doubt knows the company inside out. When looking at the management team as a whole, we can see that McGarry leads an executive team of five members, of which four of the members have been with PPG since before 2000, in one new recent addition. They also have an overall upper management team made up of 31 members, managing various aspects of the business around the globe. A nice blend of talent and experience, which is what I like to see in a management team. According to the 2019 annual report, the goals for the management team in 2020 were the following. Continue acquiring companies. And in 2020, they acquired ICR, a manufacturers and automated refinish and light industrial coatings company, and Alpha Coating Technologies, a light industrial powder coatings company. They also wanted to further investments in facilities and facility development around the world. They continued their share buybacks and dividend distributions. They also started doing some cost saving restructuring. Lastly, they wanted to reduce the overall environmental impact from their company. For the most part, they have delivered on these fronts. Lastly, looking at the stock performance since McGarry took over in September of 2015, we can see that PPG is up nearly 55% since that time. Not really anything special, yes the stock is up, but has trailed the S&P quite significantly in that same time period. Looking at what institutions hold the most PPG industry stock, we start off in 5th place with Wellington Management, 
currently holding 7.7 .7 million shares, equaling around $818 million and a 3.27% stake in PPG. Next, we have State Street with 11.3 million shares, equaling roughly $1.2 billion and a 4.83% stake in the company. In third, we have an institution that we have not seen before, Massachusetts Financial Services. They have a 7.73% stake in PPG, which equates to 18.2 million shares valued at $1.93 billion. Slightly edging them out for second is BlackRock with a 7.96% stake, which equates to 18.77 million shares valued at $1.99 billion. Lastly, we have Vanguard with an 8.35% stake in PPG, which equates to 19.7 million shares valued at over $2 billion. Now let's go a layer deeper when looking at institutions and see the transactions the top 5 institutions holding PPG made last quarter through the 13F filing. From this chart, we can see that Wellington and State Street added significantly to their stake in PPG, whereas we have Vanguard, BlackRock, and Massachusetts Financial decreasing their stakes. From the looks of it, Massachusetts Financial clearly had the largest stake in PPG prior to June 30th of 2020. Overall, we have a mix between increasing and decreasing PPG positions. So what are some of the risks when investing in PPG industries? Starting off, as we have mentioned earlier in the video, foreign currency exchange rates will have a material impact on their business on a yearly basis. Also, as a company is not really growing organically these days, they are reliant on acquisitions to improve growth figures. This can be a double-edged sword, as finding good companies every single year to acquire will put pressure on the management, and once in a while they might end up with a bad fit. Lastly, the fluctuations in raw material costs can also impact the company's income and profit margins. In my opinion. Overall, PBG is a solid company, but that's about it. They really aren't doing anything special here. I would say they are a middle of the pack company that has a lot of merit in their dividend space given their dividend history and growth. Management is not bad and they have been meeting their long-term goal targets, but haven't really shown anything beyond that the last five years. 2020 has been tough for the company due to the virus, but a rebound is expected. Still, they are subject to a lot of outside factors beyond their control and can see adverse effects of that more so than other companies. So what are my plans for PPG? I think the company is okay. Their dividend is excellent and I'm sure they will continue to pay. They also have some interesting operations catering to many different industries, but that's really all that makes me excited. More than likely, this is a pass for me, unless something drastically changes with their future outlook. What do you guys think about PPG? That concludes our analysis of PPG Industries. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, really helps out a small channel like mine. Till next time, Stock Ninja out. I am not a financial advisor, and this video is for educational purposes only. Please do your own research before buying or selling any stocks seen in this video.